Good morning, everyone. As you can see, Suzanne is away today. Michael Moon is our guest musician this morning, and we are so grateful for his offer to weave beautiful sound and song throughout our service today. I have your announcements. As soon as they come up, I'll be able to read them for you. Oh, and one screen doesn't seem to be working today. All righty. So, music, spirit choir rehearsals are on Monday nights. If you're interested in joining the choir, please contact Suzanne for more info at music at nuuc.ca. Our small group offering this uh, season is Hatha Yoga, uh, led by Christina Keel. <laughs> okay. Um, every Wednesday evening from 7.30 to 9, please bring your own yoga mat. Our art gallery right now uh, exhibiting two shows until December 31st, our very own musician Michael Moon with his Roots and Wings and Gerilyn Mannion's Between Worlds. Please take some time to have a look at their beautiful creations. Karaoke night next Saturday night, a really great time for all. Please consider coming if you haven't uh, tried it before. Uh, all song capabilities, all voice capabilities are more than welcome. It's uh, December 2nd, beginning at 7. Please bring a snack or beverage to share uh, right here in our Rafus Hall in Danforth, uh, 310 Danforth. MC Allison will be hosting and DJ Joanne Strakowski. And that is all for that one. Next slide. There's a meditation retreat on December 9th. Um, we had Melina, Melina Bondi here speaking with us a few Sunday services ago, and um, they will be presenting a full day of meditation on December 9th here. Um, more information on the, on the poster in the cappuccino room. Uh, I believe it's running from 9.30 until around... Oh, it's right there. Registration begins at 9.30, and the actual session begins at 10 and ends at 3. Uh, all are welcome. Please consider. If you would like to become a, a, a member of a neighborhood, um, deepen your connection with the community, please contact Christina Keel and learn more what is involved. And if you would like to have an announcement, um, take place during Sunday service and then uh, to appear in the Monday weekly announcements, uh, please contact our office manager, Hala, at office at nuuc.ca. And if you have your announcement to her by 10 a.m. on Friday, it will be included in the Sunday service announcements. And if you have not been put on Hala's email uh, distribution list, please let her know. Um, by emailing her at that address. Next week, December 3rd, uh, the monthly theme, Man Many Paths, and the topic presented will be our own Peter Marmarek, introducing, introducing us to the concept of a trek into the world's religions. Music will be by Spirit Choir, and our service weaver next week will be Deb Bertison. I hope you can all be here. I believe that's it for announcements. Yes. All right. And now we move into our program. Again, good morning. Welcome to Neighborhood Unitarian Universalist Congregation Service. I'm so happy to see you all here in our sanctuary as well as on Zoom. My name is Jillian Newcomb, and I'm really happy to be your service weaver once again. Each Sunday, we start our service by creating a sacred space. We join together in mind, body, and spirit. So let's all take a moment to close our eyes, calm our brains, breathe deeply, and center ourselves here. And please join me in reading our invocation. Let us cast the circle of a sacred space here. Let us cast the circle of a cherished space here, a space of safety, a place of forgiveness, a place of love. 
If we want the world to change, we must craft in our space and in ourselves the seeds that grow a different kind of life, a life of graciousness, of creative intelligence, a peace of life and spirit for ourselves and our families. I now ask if Peter would please come up and light our chalice. We like winging it here. <laughs> Thanks, Julia, for that pun. <laughs> oh, right. Now, right now, we're doing the prelude. Come on up, Michael. And I think we're all going to sing with him today. Yes. Please all sing along. So this is uh, to honor our roots and our wings that connect to the elements that make us in the earth. That uh, are, we are made of. We are part of this earth. Do we have the words? Uh, for this, you can do whatever you like for this one. Just, okay. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Michael, for that. I feel so chill now. Does everyone else feel chill? Totally relaxed? Good. It's a good place to be, a good way to be while we're here. I acknowledge where we are meeting today, where I am standing here, the land where we live and work is the traditional territory of many First Nations including the Mississauga of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis. I also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. This recognition of the contributions and historic importance of Indigenous peoples is clearly and overtly connected to our collective commitment to make real the promise and the challenge of truth and reconciliation in our communities. Our mission at Neighborhood Unitarian Universalist Congregation is to power, empower spiritual growth and shared action for the care of our world. The members and friends of Neighborhood are open to many beliefs and share from many traditions. Perhaps you're looking for a community of like-minded people, or you're on a spiritual journey to seek answers to the great mysteries of life. Maybe you wanna get actively involved helping our community grow and thrive. For whatever reason, you might find yourself here today. You are welcome. Love is the spirit of this congregation and service is our gift. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. I thank Reverend Pat for those, for suggesting those beautiful words. If this is your first visit, please stay after service to chat over a cup of coffee or tea. Our services can vary from week to week, so do come back and sample a few to get a full picture of what we're about. Suzanne Mazars is our musical director and is taking a well-deserved day off today. And as I mentioned earlier, we are thrilled to have Michael Moon here today as our guest musician. Our director of lifespan learning, Julia Thompson, will offer the time for all ages. Joanne Strakowski is providing Zoom tech support and Mark Tim is our, on our AV desk here in the sanctuary. The message of inspiration will be delivered in two parts by our own contract minister, Reverend Pat Trudeau. And as a special bonus today, one of our longest serving members, John Whitehead, will share some personal insight. Our congregational bi-monthly theme for November and December is Theologically Alive. And our monthly theme for November is Roots and Wings. That's R-U-U-T-S for Unitarian Universalism. The question Reverend Pat will be asking you later on is what gives you roots? What gives you wings? A few services ago, I spoke a little about how I found Neighborhood in March of last year and what kept me coming back. And now, as I think more deeply about Reverend Pat's question, I realize that Neighborhood has become more than just a place to pass the time on Sunday mornings or at choir on Monday evenings. It's a place where I can feel I can be truly authentic without having to play games or pretend I'm someone I'm not. It's a place where everyone knows my name without the tasteless jokes and soapy looking beer. <laughs> Here I can hang with people who are living examples of the change I want to see in the world, to quote Gandhi. And it's where I'm finding opportunities to serve others with kindness and compassion. And this gives my life meaning and purpose. Reverend Pat gave me the following reading for me to offer to you, and it ties in beautifully with what we're talking about today, about why we keep showing up, about what keeps us grounded here, what gra grows our roots, and what inspires us to give of ourselves and take flight with the wings that sprout from these roots. This reading is by Kathleen McTeague, McTeague from her work, Shine and Shadow. Good thing I'm reading it, because it's kind of hard to see on the screen, isn't it? 
It's entitled, This Place is Sanctuary. You who are brokenhearted, who woke today with the winds of despair whistling through your mind, come in. You who are brave but wounded, limping through life and hurting with every step, come in. You who are fearful, who live with the shadows hovering over your shoulders, come in. This place is sanctuary and it is for you. You who are filled with happiness, whose abundance overflows, come in. You who walk through your world with lightness and grace, who awoke this morning with strength and hope, you who have everything to give, come in. This place is your calling, a riverbank to channel the sweet waters of your life, the place where you are called by the world's need. Here we offer in love, here we receive in gratitude. Here we make a circle from the great gifts of breath, attention, and purpose. Come in. And now come in, come together, and greet the people around you. Remember we have friends on Zoom, and wave to the camera in the back. And when you hear the chimes, it will be time to find your seat. Good morning, Mark. Suzanne. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Deb. Okay. Howdy, neighbors. Hi. Mark. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Suzanne and Ziggy. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Calvin. Gail. Michelle and Gordon. Good morning. Good morning. Good Hi, okay. Valerie. There's a lot of us here. Oh, yeah. Hi, there. Doug. Yeah. Hi, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah. Sunday morning. Dan, are you Hi, in the Gail. studio? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Siggy, Hi Anna. wherever you are. Hello, Joanne. Good morning. Good morning. Who's Jacob? Oh, Hi, Valerie. <laughs> morning, Somebody's Jacob. in on phone. Oh, mm -hmm. and then, hello, people in the congregation. Yes, in the congregation. Hello, all of you. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good service. Good yeah. morning.
beautiful trees. You sound wonderful. <laughs> Hello. Nice to see you all, except that I don't see any children. <laughs> well, maybe we have plenty of people who are young at heart. Oh, you're pointing to somebody who you think is a child. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, so um, there were a lot of children last week, and that's just the way it goes, right? Sometimes there are, sometimes there aren't. Yeah. So this is the story of The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. Does anybody know this story? Yes. So it's a story about a tree that gives a boy these solid roots and then these wings to fly away, and then he comes back to his roots. Once there was a tree, and she loved a little boy. And every day the boy would come and he would gather her leaves and he would make them into crowns and play king of the forest. And he would climb her trunk and swing from her branches and eat the apples. And they would play hide and go seek. And when the boy was tired, he would lie down in her shade and have a, have a nap. And the boy loved the tree and the tree was happy. But time went by and the boy grew older and the tree was often left alone. One day the boy came to the tree and the tree said, come boy, climb up my trunk and eat my apples and swing from my branches and play in my shade and be happy. I'm too, I'm too old to climb and play, said the boy. I want, I want to buy things. I want to have fun. I want money. Do you have any money you could give me? I have no money, said the tree, but I do have leaves and I have apples. Take my apples and sell them in the city and then you will have money and you will be happy. So the boy gathered up all her apples. Sorry, I totally forgot yet. <laughs> Thank you. So the boy gathered up all her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time. And the tree was sad. And then the boy came again. And the tree was so happy, she shook with joy. And she said, come boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and, and play in my shade. And the boy said, I am too busy to, to climb trees now. I need, I need a house. I need somewhere to get out of the cold. Can you give me a house? I have no house, the tree, the forest is my house, but you may take my branches. So the boy climbed up the tree and cut off all her branches. And he took them away to make a house because he wanted a wife and he wanted children, so he needed a house. And the tree was glad to do that and she was happy. But not really. And then after a long time, the boy came back. And the tree said, the tree was, oh, she was so happy she could hardly speak. And she whispered, come, boy, come and climb my trunk and, and be happy. And the boy said, I am too sad and old to climb. I need a boat. That will, so I can sail far, far away from here. Can you give me a boat? I have no boat, said the tree, but you may cut down my trunk. Can we have the next slide? You may cut down my trunk and you may use it to build a boat. So the boy cut down her trunk and took it away and made himself a boat and sailed far, far away. Well, it was a long, long time before the boy came back. And the tree said, I'm sorry, boy. 
but I have nothing left to give you. I, my apples are gone. My teeth are too weak to eat apples now, said the boy. My branches are gone. I'm too old to swing from branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You can no longer climb. I'm too weak to climb now, said the boy. The tree sighed. I'm sorry. I, I wish I had something to give you, but I'm just an old stump now. Well, I don't need much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit for sitting and resting. Well, said the tree, an old stump is a good place, they say, for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit and rest. And the boy did, and the tree was happy. Thank you for listening. Roots hold me close. Wings set me free. Does that sound familiar? Some of, some of you. Spirit of life, come to me, come to me. These words are from the UU hymn, Spirit of Life, written by Carolyn McDade. It has become a UU anthem. It's on our, in our list of top 10. It, it always comes up as somewhere in that list. It's popular, I think, because of, it speaks to who we are. This faith is a living faith that is open to change and not fettered by dogma. Roots hold me close, wings set me free. As I walked past a neighbor's house this week, I noticed a deep hole that revealed the roots of a small tree. These roots, the roots were actually thicker and deeper than the little tree itself. I wondered how many people, I wondered how people are, are like trees. I thought about how there's so much beneath the surface uh, that we can't see. There's so much background, history. There's so much in each person. Today we are talking about the roots of our UU faith. We're not talking about shrubbery, we're not talking about these roots. <laughs> um, we're talking, um, sorry, I lost. Uh, what do we mean when we talk about, when we talk about UU roots? We mean that, mean um, faith, our beliefs, our convictions, our experiences, our stories, our relationships, and feelings of belonging. That feeling when you, when you walk in and you feel like you belong, when you walk through the door and you feel like you belong over and over again. Our eight principles, all eight of them, ground us in justice, equity, and compassion, integrity, democratic processes, and respect for all life, all life on the planet, all life. They ground us in love. So our sources also ground us. They ground us in mystery, wisdom, spirituality, nature, ancient customs and rituals, scripture. The sources affirm our early history and our connections with other faiths and religions. Our shared rituals hold us and nurture these roots. These are some of the rituals, rituals we will share today. Joys and concerns is one of them. Lighting the candle, as we did earlier, and extinguishing the candle. They're rituals that are so simple and so sacred, but oh my goodness, if we forget any one, one of those, 
somebody will say, hey, you haven't done this. They are sacred. Many of us come to this congregation seeking community. Some come with UU roots formed in other congregations and fellowships. Some come with no roots in any formal faith community, but with their own deep cultural and family roots. Some come from roots in other faiths and religions. <clears throat> we all seem to come seeking to be part of something larger than ourselves. We seek and hope to find a spiritual home where everybody knows our name, your name. When I first went to Pittsburgh, um, I, w I went to Pittsburgh with a, an 18-month-old. I was mid-career. And uh, I, I, I was really, I, I had been gravely uprooted. Um, so we ended up going to Pittsburgh First, it's Pittsburgh First Unitarian Universalist, a fairly large uh, congregation. So coming from a large Canadian, mostly Catholic family, and a place where I was held ever so tightly in, in a woven basket of old friends, colleagues, and community to a new city and a new country with only my small family of three, I felt so rootless. I felt so unhappy. I told Wilburn, my, my spouse, hey, if we go to one of those Unitarian churches, I bet we'll meet some people like us. They all seem so nice. We arrived and were introduced to others, including families with small kids. At the end of the service, some women invited me to come to lunch. That was it. 30 years later, the roots stretch so far and wide that we, we can go to any congregation in Canada or fellowship and find ourselves at home. It feels like extended family. As you use, we are part of an ancestral tree that is over 400 years old. We say that every week, don't we? Our faith is over 400 years, but what does that mean? Who are those ancestors? Are they faceless? Are they nameless? No. We have a rich history, and I would so dearly like to tell you all about it for hour after hour, but I won't. <laughs> In seminary, I studied UU history and often resisted knowing all the names of what seemed like a long line of privileged white men from Britain or from New England. Their stories, their words. I wondered, what about their wives? What about their partners? And that's what I did my, my paper on, on um, wives of ministers. I had been happily UU for many years without UU History 101. What kicked it in for me was one of my teachers, in, my teacher's encouragement to look at the stories of UU women. That did it. I was off. I was off on a, a quest. That was the place where the history came alive and I found myself immersed in the lives and struggles of women. I will lift up just a few of these. And thank you to our tech people for this. This picture, next picture, is Sophia Lyon Foss. She was born in 1876 and died in 1978. So do the math. <laughs> uh, she was born in China to Presbyterian missionary parents, but changed her religious views when she went to graduate, graduate school and when she had children. As an educator, she emphasized the importance of children's experience and developed a child-centered approach to religious education, which we still use today. She was hired by the American Unitarian Association, called AUA, in 1937 to write and edit a series of children's curricula. She did not join a UU church until 1945 and was ordained 14 years later as a UU minister, uh, sorry, as a Unitarian minister. Over the course of her 101-year life, she brought about a re revolution in religious education. And so every year, we would have the FAS lecture 
at um, at seminary in uh, Chicago, and uh, it was it's a very rich it's it's an honor to do that that lecture. The next picture is Viola Lius Liuso. I hope I'm not I'm saying that name right. L i u z z o, Italian, who who lived from 1925. There she is. And to 1965, she grew up in a poor family in the midst of racial segregation. She also had, she had five kids. As an adult in Detroit, she was active in the Unitarian Church and in local efforts for education reform and economic justice. When she saw what was going on with the civil rights movement in, Sel in Mon um, a civil rights movement in Selma and Montgomery, Alabama, she decided to head south and help. She marched with thousands of others from Selma to Montgomery in support of civil rights as she drove a carload of people home from the protest, including some African Americans. She was shot, murdered by, a white, by white supremacists. And that's part of our history. Look at her. Now this is a woman that I actually knew, met um, and I didn't know what a big deal she was. <laughs> I'd just meet her at conferences and I'd talk with her and she would be at a booth and anyway, I got to know her and uh, she's really amazing. Marjorie Bowens Wheatley, 1949 to 2006. After several years of working as a public television producer and for the Unitarian Universalist Service Committee, she became a Unitarian Universalist minister. She was a founding member of the African American Unitarian Universalist Ministry, which later became DRUM, the UU Organization for People of Color. Now, my spouse really loves to rub it in when we go to conferences and they have DRUM lunches, and he says, he'll say, you can't come. <laughs> But he often brings me something. They, and there's a, it's a, a special space where, that is reserved. And they, they really do some, some, have some fine networking there. And she was also the editor of the book Soul Work, Anti-Racist Theologies in Dialogue, 2002. It's, it's worth looking at. Now the next one is Lada, can you say the last name? Hitchmano. <laughs> It took me years to get that name. Lotta Hitchmanova. And do you know where her picture is in the sanctuary? By the office. Yes, by the office. Uh, 1909 to August 1990. She was a Canadian, um, Canadian humanitarian. In 1945, she helped to found the Un Unitarian Service Committee of Canada, which was later called SEED. Change, an international development organization consisting of a small group of aid workers sending supplies to war-torn Europe for relief and reconstruction. She also went to Europe several times. And this is what she wore. She always, she wore that hairstyle and she wore that military, um, that mili a military hat, which you can't see there. And she was attired in an army nurse's uniform she traveled yearly to strife-torn and poverty-stricken parts of, of the world, searching out towns and villages in need of Canadian assistance. Um, and she was particularly devoted to um, assistance to recover from drought, war, disease, and poverty. In 1920, I'm sorry, <laughs> or 2020, Hitchmanova was one of the eight finalists for the $5 polymer bills in Canada. Um, she, she wasn't chosen, but she was on the list. You can see, again, you can see her photo in the sanctuary by the office. I hope in the next year to facilitate some classes on UU history um, in, in the new year as part of our, our adult education. And I will include other UU ancestors and visionaries. And um, I, I promise to make it as, as interesting for you as it is for me. <laughs> Roots hold me close and wings set me free.
you so much, Reverend Pat. And now for the special time in our service that brings our community closer together, you are welcome to come up, light a candle, speak from your heart, and share something that is currently on your mind or happening in your life. And please remember to honor the sacredness of this ritual and try to be brief. The service recording will be put on pause and John has kindly, with an arm twist, agreed to uh, distribute the candles. So please form lines on either side of the sanctuary. Take one candle from John and, uh, motion, and come to me when I motion to you. Um, if John could please remember to go around through the back so that there's not traffic going back and forth in front of our chalice. Thank you so much. I do agree appreciate you agreeing with the arm twist to do this. For those on, on Zoom, Joanne will call on you after those in the sanctuary. We start by expressing gratitude to all of you who uh, contribute your time, dedication, and energy voluntarily to help this congregation grow. Without you, we would not have a congregation, so it is greatly appreciated. These services are truly a collaborative effort. A lot of work goes into it each week. A lot of people help. And I would like to light this next candle for a longtime neighborhood member, Sandra Lynn Rafus, who passed away on Monday, November 13. And these words uh, were given to me by Alison Kabayama, who knew her well. Sandy, as I said, passed away on Monday, November 13, surrounded by her daughters, Robin, Kim, Sharon, and her three grandchildren. Sandy's adventurous, creative, social justice loving spirit led her to join neighborhood where her sparkling light enriched all who knew her. Sandy and her husband, Bob, were generous and very kind, which sustained us as a congregation and allowed us to grow and to beautify this space, which is named Rafus Hall after both of them. A memorial for, will, for Sandy will be held here in Rafus Hall in the spring. And this is also a candle of love and hope for Sandy's family and their well being and healing during this difficult time. It's time, time for meditation. So get, I, I ask you just to put both feet on the ground if you can, and get comfortable in your chair. Just let your shoulders drop a little bit. Let go, let go of that tension in your body. Just feel fully present. In the silence. by Sarah Eileen Lawal. Spirit of love and life, in the silence, in the stillness, we hear the call of our own heart. Its tender dreams, its sorrows, and its triumphs in the silence. In the stillness, we hear whispers of days gone by, of dreams still becoming. The promise of the future we celebrate together, our individual journeys and dreams, and our collective ones. Knowing the journey is so much richer with others to share it, in the name of all that is holy, we pray. In the stillness we hear whispers of days gone by, of dreams still becoming the promise of the future. Just take a moment, keep your eyes closed if you can. Just take, take a few minutes just to feel, to feel comfortable and to listen to the music.
Thank you, Michael. I now call up John Whitehead to say a few words as a lifetime Unitarian. Roots hold us close. I have always been happy to identify my UU roots, which began before my dad's family immigrated from Northern England, uh, and they stretch back uh, to the mill towns of Lancashire, where my father's parents married in Bolton's Unity Church, which is now a Hindu temple. My first memory of going, oh, actually, my, I don't have a memory of this, but I was christened at uh, Birchcliffe School uh, when my parents were members of uh, Birchcliffe Heights Unitarian Fellowship. And uh, back in the early 1950s, sometime after I was born. They've lost those records, though, so there's <laughs> I'm not officially uh, uh, christened, I guess. Uh, my first memory of going to Toronto first was in 1954, the Sunday after Hurricane Hazel, when our family was driving up the Bayview Extension through the floodwaters of the Don Valley. It was a perilous experience. Um, um, uh, Shortly after that, in the mid-50s, the Unitarian Fellowship of, uh, of the East End, known as Birchcliffe Heights Fellowship, and the Don Heights, uh, Don Mills uh, Fellowship, merged to create Don Heights. And being UUs, they compromised on an affordable piece of farmland uh, on Kennedy Avenue, just south of the 401, uh, nowhere close to where anyone lived. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, and uh, they built the first Don Heights Church, which eventually became a high-rise and was sold, and, the, and uh, the Don Heights congregation moved back to the Don Mills area. Uh, being raised as a UU was instrumental in my personal development and having and developing an inquiring mind and not being spiritually chained by the dogmas of other Christian traditions uh, and helped to set my, to help to grow the wings that set me free eventually and open my, 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 my experience to experiencing the world and other traditions and I was happy when the East End UU started neighborhood back in the 1990s. Being brought up a UU, or I used to identify myself as a wasu, not a wasp, uh, <laughs> it gave me the wings to explore many spiritual traditions. And, it, uh, and in the end, the realization that wherever the UUs gather, and wherever that may be throughout North America or the UK or anywhere in the world, uh, that is my spiritual home. Thank you. I think I remember Hurricane Hazel, but I'm not sure. <laughs> For years now, I have provided wings to the young and the young at heart at, um, young at heart you use at summer camps and institutes, often at Unicamp, but also in certain places in the States. I literally offer wings. It's not a metaphor. I have about 40 pairs of various sizes and colors, and that's after pruning this summer, throwing away the really trashy ones. And, and uh, they, so they're, they're stored and they're cleaned, and uh, we wear them at Unicamp. Each summer at Unicamp, we hold, we hold a fairy parade on the long weekend, and uh, we wind our way through the woods singing and marveling at the, the 400 some candles that Dave Franzetti has placed along the path and lit. And there is a live fairy who dances past us. There we are. <laughs> and you're invited. Next Labor Day weekend, come. Everybody who wants to dresses up and we indulge in some great fairy magic. Despite years, so that's us there. <laughs> Lauren is the fire fairy, and Dave, you're the... Yeah, and I'm, yeah. And we have a flower fairy there, you can tell. <laughs> Despite um, years of celebrating fairy magic, I'll confess to you that I have never flown. <laughs> I have never flown until a child from this congregation uh, showed me how. 
For years, I would pick up a young, her, my young fairy friend whenever I saw her and whirl her around in, in, her, in my arms. I would just whirl her around, her arms waving and both of us laughing. And I think I did that until she was eight. And uh, she, at this point, I think she's bigger than me, so we don't do that anymore. <laughs> but um, one day, she told me it was, it was my turn to fly. <laughs> I said, I don't know. She wrapped her little arms, her small arms around me and turned me around and around while I waved my arms. I will demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> and we both flew. What color are your wings? Mine are pretty much always blue and purple and with sparkles. What, have wings, what do wings have to do with our UU faith? Well, everything. Whether real or imagined, wings represent new beginnings, possibility, mystery, magic, freedom, freedom to be ourselves. There is no other place that I, as a minister, can don fairy wings and, and, um, and play like that. Roots hold me close, wings set me free, spirit of life, come to me, come to me. For Unitarian Universalists, revelation is not finished or sealed. We have much to discover and to experience. We dream of a future where we can all be free, free to be ourselves, can experience dignity and where all life can thrive. As much as our roots allow us to be grounded in shared values, our wings allow us to imagine and to create. When our minds, minds are truly free to consider new ideas and new cultures, we can begin to let go of dogma and prejudices that have kept us stuck in old ways and old patterns. We find our wings in music and poetry, dance, film, literature, good conversations, and in rituals that stimulate our creative energy. We find our wings also in social action that supports our belief, working for a, for a free and fair world. It's part of our mission statement, our mission statement for neighborhood, shared action for our world. We find wings in our stories, in our wonderful music. May you find yourself grounded in a faith that is still growing and a congregation that is rooted in love, supported by a history of thoughtful, courageous people who have gone before us. Roots hold me close, wings set me free, say it with me, spirit of life come to me come to me. Thank you. And now I have some questions. So Peter, Peter asked me, what's the question for this week? I said, well, the question is, what gives you roots and what gives you wings? But I could define it a little more than that. So what words and stories, sto what's, uh, what philosophy are you rooted in? Which are most meaningful to you? I'll also be asking you that second part about wings. What role do freedom, reason, tolerance, faith, hope, and love play in your religious spiritual life? What, what gives you roots and what gives you wings? And now, the fun part. We all, I know you wait for this every day, every Sunday. But for us to grow, for us to exist, and for us to grow, we need money. Volunteer work is integral and very much appreciated, but it takes monetary support to pay for our staff salaries and our programs that we all benefit from. Friends and members of neighborhood can give either through the weekly collection, predated checks or e-transfers, or even automatic withdrawals. For those who want to contribute today, 
um, the greeters will pass baskets around and people on Zoom are free to use the link displayed on the screen, which will lead you to our website donations page. In whatever way you choose to give, please uh, be as generous as you are able. You don't have to give a lot. Just a little goes a long way, and I thank you. Michael will play while the greeters are passing the baskets, and then when you're finished, you can bring them up and we'll conclude. If you have found love and acceptance here, if you have found home here, if you have known kindred spirits here, if your roots are growing here, and if your wings are sprouting, let your offering be a token of gratitude for our common life as we build the common good. Thank you. Sorry. 
Michael for everything you've done today and last night. So to conclude, please join hands or lock arms or touch shoulders as we come to cl Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. It's right here written. The ritual of extinguishing the chalice, Peter, I invite you to come up and do what we like to do at the end of our service. And we can all as in dark end, we hold the fire within our own hearts. <laughs> and now I pass the mic to Reverend Pat, who will give us our closing blessing. Oh, We have a few new people here today, and I would hope that you would come and, and see me after the service so that I can get your, um, your contact information and invite you to a dinner. If you are proud of this faith, become its advocate. If you are concerned for it, its future, share the message. If its values resonate deep within you, give it a measure of your devotion. This faith cannot survive without your faith, your confidence, your enthusiasm. Its destiny, the larger hope, rests in your hands. Our service is ended. Go in peace. Return in love.